how are we doing folks welcome back to another film now we should actually be out with a camera today but we've other other projects to do so come on down into the into the grotto into the workshop so what we're doing today well i've been meaning to do this film for quite a long time and i've never got around to it so this is the perfect opportunity what we're going to do, we're going to get creative today. We're going to make one of these. So we're going to make a box pouch. Now, I use these all the time. They're absolutely brilliant and they're not difficult to make. So that's what we're going to do today. You need minimal gear. You need to know your way around a sewing machine very, very slightly. If I can do it, you can do it. So box pouches, what are we using for? Well, I use them for a, a whole host of things. All my camera trapping stuff, it's all organised in these nice little pouches. I recently bought this, 24 to 70 mil. Didn't come with a case. Made a box pouch for it. Perfect. Actually lined this one, so I've got a nice, nice felt lining inside there. And it just saved me buying one, you know, for a, for a few quid. Easy to make. All my camo stuff. All my, all my uh, like real tree ghillie suit, if you will. It's all wrapped up in that one. Keeps it all nice and uh, nice and neat and nice and compact, and it doesn't end up all over the place in my photography bag. So they're a useful bit of kit. If you don't want to make one, you know where to get one. Link in the description below. But come on, have a do. You need a. A small sewing machine and a few uh, bits and bats so we'll have a look at the machine that we're going to use and we'll have a look at the bits that we need as well Okay, folks so this is what we're going to be making today this is the size of box pouch that we're going to be creating all right so this one is 160 millimeters lengthways it's 80 millimeters wide and it's 120 millimeters deep and it'll hold a whole host of stuff this is I use this for all my cam traptions receivers and transmitters but it's just a, a nice general size. So what we're going to make it out of? Well, you can pretty much use anything you want, any any old material. But I like these to be made out of a waterproof fabric. So we make these out of Cordura. These are 600 denier Cordura fabric. It's a really hard wearing, got a waterproof backing. We can also use... Um, different colours of stuff but generally the cordura is the stuff canvas canvas is a good thing we've got uh, a dpm cordura there but for this particular project we're just going to make it out of plain dark olive 600d cordura but we're going to add a bit of luxury to this one we're going to line it so i have this material it's uh, i'm not sure where i got it from to be honest but the back on it it's almost like a like a felt if you will so because this is going to have some camera equipment in it we're going to line it with uh, a little bit of luxury so equipment wise what do we need right it's basic stuff it's nothing too uh, too technical so decent ruler for marking out a decent pair of scissors all right not a, a naff pair of scissors a nice nice strong pair of scissors we've got some little clips little magic clips okay you can use little bulldog clips, but they're fantastic just for holding your, your workpiece uh, in place and your zips, etc. Bit of double sided sticky tape. I'll show you what that's for after. A lighter, that's just for the ends of the, of the webbing. I'll explain that in a minute. Now, a length of zip. Now, I generally use endless zip. All right, so that's a massive, big, long, 100 meter length of zip. I can cut zips to whatever length I want. If it's only a one-off, you just buy a, a standard zip. Now, for this pouch that we're making, 
that's the size of material that you need so it's going to be 420 millimeters by 300 millimeters okay so the length of zip that you need we want the zip probably about I don't know 100 mil longer on each end than the narrowest piece the narrowest dimension I should say so that's our 300 mil so you probably want a zip that's near a 500 between 450 and 500 mil it's just that they need to overlap it, it makes the, the process easier in the end if you make it too tight it'll be difficult to to sew the zip in so we've got our our length of zip that we've cut there so that one is yeah 490 so it's just short of 500 millimeters also with the zip we obviously need a zip puller yeah so we'll show you how to put that on after we want two pieces of one inch webbing and all they do that just creates a little pull tab at the end so when you when you're opening and closing it you've something to hold it by and you can open the zip nice and easy so that's just a, a tab you could put a little carabiner on there if you want and it's just something to hang the bag by so we'll put two of them on lengthwise let's have a look at them so they are 100 millimeters yep and then this is more for the machine we've got our zipper foot so we've got a standard foot and a zipper foot and that is pretty much it to be honest we've got our template our cardboard template you don't need that but it just uh, when you're making a lot of them i tend to use cardboard templates and also for this particular one we're going to need a square of cardboard that is two inch by two inch and that'll help us to create the box corner so that's all our our equipment apart from the sewing machine i'll show you which machine we're going to use so for this particular exercise i'm going to use my industrial machine but you don't need an industrial machine when i first started off doing these i just had a i had a really old machine and the, the secret is to have a good needle in so you need a good probably what they call a jeans needle so for sewing jeans and heavy fabric i then progressed to this this is a singer heavy duty it's not particularly heavy duty to be honest it's not like the old machines that are cast iron there's a lot of plastic in it it's all right it does the job and any machine that you have as long as you've got a nice strong needle in it will do the job um, but like i said we're going to use the um the zoji the industrial machine but you don't need an industrial machine to do this little project any old sewing machine but the secret is the needle and some nice strong thread so the thread that we're using so this is the thread bonded nylon very strong thread you can't it's it's thin but you cannot break it it is so it's really really strong stuff so yeah bonded nylon thread that is um 60s yeah 60 s bonded nylon we're just going to use black you can use whatever color you want to go with the fabric whatever you're using right first job let's clear the workspace make a bit of room right the first thing we want to do after we've got our pieces of material cut out is to prepare the zip so at the moment the zip ends are open what we need to do is just run a stitch along there so that once the the puller is on it won't come flying off the end so we're just going to put a stitch across there now Now what we need to do is install the zipper end, the zip puller I should say, into the zip. This can be a little bit tricky so all we need to do is just open it up by maybe an inch. Then one end, feed it in so we've got the rounded end of the zip puller. Just till it clicks once. And then the other end, feed that in. As we're feeding that in, we need to pull up slightly on that and then just try and even the zip up, if you will. 
So once that's in, it's a case of clamping the zip down. So I put one finger on either side and then a bit of a wiggle and there we go, the zip's in. So that's it, we've got the zip puller in now. We've got both ends with a stitch on so that it won't pull out. What we need to do now is pull the zip puller to one end. There we go, so that's it. That's at one end of the zip. That can go to one side now. Now we've got our material and our lining. We've got the good side. Okay, that's the side that we're gonna see and what I call the bad side, which is the inside. We've also got our lining on this one. So all I tend to do with this, the cut exactly the same size. We're going to stick that to the bad side of the material with some double-sided sticky tape. Dead simple. All I tend to do is just put one line across the diagonal. So this is just, I think it's 20 millimeters. And then one across the other diagonal. And it's just to hold it into place while we actually perform the process of making the box pouch. So there we go, we've got our X, if you will, of double-sided tape. We've got our lining there, so that's the nice felt lining. So that's gonna be face up, and we just need to put that on there. Give it a little press down. Make sure it's nice and flat. And there we have it so we've got our lining on and that's our good side so now we're ready to attach the zip what we're going to do now we're going to line the zip up with the fabric so we've got the lining facing upwards we're going to place it on there equal distance either side and the edge of the fabric is lining up with the right hand side of the zip then all we're going to do is just put a little clip on there one at the bottom and we'll stick one in the middle so we end up with that so the zip facing upwards okay and the fabric is running down that right hand side and what we're going to do now is we're going to run a stitch right down there so for this part of the process we need our zipper foot there's our, our little zipper foot there dead simple we take the standard foot off put this one on and we're ready to go Okay, taking our piece of material, we've got the zip on the right hand side, all we're going to do, take that first clip off, we're going to put a little securing stitch there, and then we're going to run right down here, using the, the guides on the bottom of the machine to help you, and we're just going to run a stitch right down there, down the side of the zip. Securing stitch at the end. So now we've got a nice straight stitch down there. What we're going to do now is fold that over. So <laughs> you see the stitch there, we're going to fold that material over to expose the zip. You can see there. And then what we're going to do now is run a stitch right down there. So again, the zipper on the right hand side, be a little bit tricky this, you want a nice straight run, so foot up, once we've got it under the foot, securing stitch, and then nice and slowly, Up 
press it down with your finger. And once you get to the end, secure and stitch. And there we go. We've got a nice seam running down the side of the zip. Now, what we need to do with your material like that, zip up, there's your nice finished edge. We need to bring that material over and we're going to go over the zip and we're going to take it to the right hand side there. We're going to line them up. So we want the material lined up with the other side of it and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to run a stitch right down there now. The material is nicely lined up with the edge of the zip. We're just going to run a full length stitch down there. <clears throat> there we go. So we end up basically then with a tube. What we need to do is put our hand through it, pull the zipper and open the zip up, turning the whole thing inside out. Well, it's actually, we're actually turning it the right way around. So what we end up then is with a, a tube, one side of the zip is stitched, the other side isn't yet. We've just got that one length of, length of stitching done. We need to start, we need to turn the zip now and we need to run another length down there. So as you can see there. We can put a little clip on just to secure it if you want. And we're good to go. As I was saying before, the reason why we leave three or four inches at the end is to enable you now to get the workpiece underneath and have plenty of room. If it was too short, you'd be struggling. So. Get that lined up with the, the zip again. Down, securing stitch, and then nice and slowly down the side of the zip. Once we get to the end, securing stitch, and there we have it. So that is the zip installed now. What we can do, we can turn that back inside out, close the zip up, and we've got a fully fully sewn tube there with a the zip in it, ready for the next part of the process. Okay, so our zip is now attached, and we have our sleeve. Yep. What we need to do now is the next part of the process so what we need to do we need that zip in the center we don't want it like that off at one side so it's smaller there and larger there we need it right in the middle so we need to measure that and it's 200 millimeters so <laughs> that is absolutely bang on so you can see there 200 millimeters we want the center of the zip right on the 100 millimeter mark once we've got that, get our little clips, just bob a clip on there and a clip on there, spin the whole thing round. When you do that, it should actually be central, but just check it. Perfect. Happy with that. Right, clip on the end and a clip on there. So that is secured now. What we need to do is run a line about 10 millimeters in from the edge down there. So we've got our white china graph marker. We're just gonna run a line down there, turn it round, same again. Line down there and a line down there. Now, next part of the process, very important. We can see the zipper there at one end. That zipper has to come down into the middle. Okay, if we leave it up there and then we sew along there, 
the zip is not going to work so it has to go into the center okay so zips in the middle just keep it nice and flat what we're going to do now we're going to add our two pull tabs on the end so we've got our piece of one inch webbing the lighter we just want to seal the end very quickly same with that one just to stop it fraying and there once they're done double it over and then seal the two ends together wet your finger just rub that down and we've got our little one inch loop same with the other one so we've got our two our two pull tabs there now what we're going to do this is our one end where the zip is actually open which we've got to take care to keep that zip pushed together and we're going to put the tab closed end in and you can see there we've got the two stitch lines we need to keep them right in the center so not off to one side like that because that would be ridiculous they need to be right in the center so keeping that tab square with the material it's all done by the rack of the eye hold that in position two little clips just to hold that in position and there we go that's one side now the other side exactly the same there's our pull tab closed end pointed inwards again line it up in at right angles flush with the end and then close that down and then we can put our two little clips on just to hold that in position there we go and that's what we should have now so our next part our little two inch piece of cardboard what we need to do is that goes right on the corner so run the little template down that line that we've just created and flush with the top we're going to get our marker and we're just going to draw a two inch square on that corner the same for all four corners well there we go all four corners marked up everything's clipped now the next part of the process we need to run a stitch from there down to here where that square finishes there we need to do three or four stitches because what we're going to do eventually we're going to cut this out so it's important that this is secured so we're going to run a stitch down there back and forward three or four times down here we're going to stitch over the zip which is why we have to have a strong needle in we need a jeans needle or the industrial machine over there a few times don't forget we're actually stitching through that nylon webbing as well so that's a bit thicker there down here we're going to do three or four stitches over there over that line and then out off the end now what we're going to do we're going to take the zipper foot off and put our standard foot back on we need as much contact with the material as we can get let's have a walking foot back on and here we go so this first stitch we don't actually have to secure this we can we can just start off there nice and slowly once we get to there reverse three or four times and then take that clip off hold this down we don't want that piece of webbing moving so we've got a now we're going over the zip quite careful here reverse so we've been over that twice and then carry on don't forget where that that line is we want three or four stitches so down there back 
and off the end. That's that end done. Spin around and exactly the same again. Down the line. Up to the zip, take your clip off. Keep this nice and tight, nice and slowly. And then down to that line again. And off the end. Okay, back to the table. Okay, so we've stitched all the way down there, all the way down there, our zip is in the middle. What we need to do now, we need to get rid of these two ends of the zip. So spin that over, again, nice strong pair of scissors, we're going to cut through that nylon zip, piece of cake, same on the other side, just trim that off. There we go, we can get rid of that now. And that's what we should have right what we're going to do now we're going to cut each square out that's why we need nice strong scissors so we can cut right to the tip if you've got weak scissors you're going to struggle and you're going to have to use the inside and it's a little bit more difficult so end of the zip we can just there we go nice a nice finish to that So once we've got our four corners cut out, this is the part of the process that creates the actual box pouch. Now, we have to be mindful of where the zip is on here. So with the zip at the top, when we create that corner, that zip is running down. We need to stitch that that way, okay? We don't want to stitch it that way because it'll, it'll curl that end up. So we go with, with the zip. So that's going to face down. What we need to do, each corner, we need to hold the end. Hold the end there. And then with the aid of a little clip, we can bob a clip on there. Clip one on, on the end. And we can also put one at the top if you like. And then what we're going to do, we're going to run a stitch down there. We haven't got a line on there, but what we'll use is the, the line on the bottom, on the bed of the, the sewing machine. And we're going to run a 10 millimeter line in from the edge, roughly. It's not critical, but it wants to be parallel all the way down. And we'll do that with each four corner. Quite important that this seam here is at 90 degrees to this this edge so the foot up we're just going to use this line here our quarter inch line we're just going to line that up with the end we're going to put a securing stitch a back stitch on here and then just run it down there when we go over this this seam what i'm going to do i'm going to double stitch it just to secure it and then down there and a finishing stitch and that's what we've got now we need to do that on all four corners okay there we have it that's our box pouch inside out let's finish it off okay so we've we've sewn down all four corners all we need to do now there shouldn't be that much to do, but we can just dress it off, just come in a couple of millimetres, trim any, any frayed bits off, any corners that aren't quite neat, any little bits of thread we can trim off. These aren't too bad actually. Okay, there we have it. So open the zip up and just turn it inside out.
put your finger into each corner, push the corners out, same with the top corner as well. And there we have it. One simple Cordura box pouch. Simple as you like. We've got our two tabs on the end there. And that's it. That's all there is to it. I'm not going to tell you the formula for making all the different size pouches because there's plenty of box pouch calculators on the internet. But that's just the process of making one of these. They're super handy. They're brilliant. You know, like I said, I put all my, my camo gear in. You can put scarves in. You can put... You can make different sizes for wash bags, for putting food in, cooking stuff, you know, camping gear, you name it. And you can make them basically out of anything. You don't need a lot of equipment and you don't really need a lot of know-how. You've just watched the film, so you know how to do it now. So that's it. That's it for this one. Just a short how-to film. Um, I don't know whether we're going to get another film out before Christmas. Possibly not. If we don't, have a fantastic Christmas everyone. Thanks very much for the support for the channel, you've been absolutely amazing. I'm trying my best to get the uh, the films out a bit more consistently, so that every, every week, touch wood, I don't know whether that's going to happen or not, but we're trying our best. The house move, we've, we've been postponed again, so it's going to be the new year. I can't wait to get down there, but that's for, that's for another, another film for another day. So. Thanks again for watching, have a fantastic Christmas and New Year, and we'll see you next year. All the best, see you again.